<laughs> well, let me tell you how you get A's in all your classes. Right, you ready? Yeah. Right. Exceed expectations. If you exceed the expectations of those around you, you will begin to receive favor. Now, in my car, who rode with me again? Raise your hands. What was the one thing that was most important? I kind of harped on it. You were going to do 10 push-ups if you didn't do it. Ooh, what, was, what was the one thing, sir? Yes, sir. No, sir. Or um, don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment and say yes, sir, no, sir. Now, what is the key about saying yes, sir, no, sir, as it becomes a yes, sir? Uh, it shows that you've been trained. It shows that you have been trained. You have respect. It shows you have respect. It, watch this. It tells people you have you. Wow. you. So watch this. You went from being a consumer of my time to being a producer of your own destiny. You don't, listen to me guys, there is a point, uh, 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 speakers, uh, uh, men, uh, students, there's a point when you won't need me. And that's the job of any producer, is to produce after their own kind so that you don't need me. To be able to stand alone. Now watch this, with consumers, I mean with producers, Watch this. Here's what producers have. Producers, they have a seller's mindset. Everything about themselves is for sale. Watch this. My time is for sale. All right? Uh, my mind is for sale. Watch this. I'll even put my body out there for sale. But watch this. In the sense of being an athlete, if I'm skilled and I know how to use my body to produce on the field, I am for sale. To the highest. Sale. But you're going to have to, to get my I am a Producer, you want me? You're going to have to pay for me. You want to learn how to uh, start a business? You're going to have to pay for me. Now watch this. One of the things about paying is not always in money. Gentlemen, who's in my car? Again, i got to refer to you. What's the difference between riches and wealth? What are riches? Riches is things. And what is wealth? Knowledge. What are riches? Thanks. What is wealth? Knowledge. Everyone, what is riches? Thanks. What is wealth? Knowledge. All right. The reason why I'm defining those two is because if you don't bring definition to your life, you will be lost. There's a proverb. Uh, there's an old proverb that says, "Do not spend your time chasing riches, for riches do take wings and fly away." A lot of people out here are chasing riches. All I heard when this young lady, the cookie young, what's your first name, ma'am? Deanna. When Deanna was speaking, everybody was thinking about, well, not everybody, the adults were thinking about, how is she working out her riches? And the young men were talking about, I sure hope I can get her number. <laughs> <laughs> Am I talking right there? You know, she's like, I've been through this every time I talk. Wait, 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 wait. But let's keep it on the real. Let's keep it on the real. Can you really afford her number? Oh, <laughs> Let me help you out. My job is to teach you what you can and cannot afford as a producer or consumer. I can tell you right now, from my perspective, you can't afford it. Because this is a trained young lady. So parents have invested in her. And so she's not, listen, listen to, if you're gonna if you're gonna get her number, you have to come with more than just the hey. Uh, 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 you've got to be able to pay the price because she is a producer. Consumers can't afford producers. Producers produce producers. Matter of fact, you're always attracted to your life. When we're mentoring, we're trying to teach you to pursue the thing that has real value. So we listen to me. You come to us as consumers, but you ought to leave us as producers. What kind of people on the earth? Consumers and producers. You gotta decide which one you're gonna be from this moment forward. The next speakers that come up, they're gonna give you value. Listen, if you're not taking notes, you're missing your the guys in my band should have been loud. Moment! Moment! Don't miss your moment. And listen, in mentoring men, don't miss your moment. The Saturday you don't come is a moment that you missed. And you lost the opportunity to decrease your value and increase somebody else's value. It's all about perspective. Bring definition to your living. I got about three more minutes. So watch this. I'm going to give you the importance of mentoring uh, in terms of what it teaches. And this is for my speakers. Because you are mentoring, whether you know it or not, you are. You may not define it that way, but every time you open your mouth with that vast wealth of knowledge and information that you have from sitting down and writing those notes and trying to make it interesting and entertaining, you are increasing someone's value. And that's mentoring. So here we go. Mentoring does this. Watch this. Mentoring teaches the mentee how to know their value. Whenever you give an exchange of information, there was a cost you paid to have it. And there's a price they'll pay to take notes and get it. 
I, I'm an I'm a interim teacher in the public school system. Anybody know what an interim teacher is? Anyone? Who said that? Who said that? Say it loud, Steve. Come on. <laughs> but my students would not call me a substitute. You know why? Because I define myself by my own standards. Whenever my students at Benjamin Tasker or any other schools deal with me, they're like, awesome day, Mr. Green, because I have established my definition. I'm an awesome guy. An awesome guy has an awesome day. I do not have bad days. I have bad moments and great days. They're clear about that because I'm always increasing their value. So watch this. I teach them their value. None of my students have bad days anymore because I gave them some of what I had, which was knowledge. That There is no such thing as a bad day, by the way. There are bad moments in a great day. By the way, don't miss your moment. Okay? Second thing is, not only do they uh, know their value, but they increase in value. Every day that you take note from somebody else's life, you are increasing in value. My wife, I'm married 18 years. I am a better man for her being in my life because she increases my value. Every woman in the house just said, value? Value. Shoot, value. <laughs> Uh, she popped her collar. I am the value. That's right. Because listen, listen to me. My wife, watch this. She has challenged every presumption in my mind about what being a man is. Because I'm her man. So watch this. Y'all gonna get this one day. You can laugh if you want, but you gonna, right now, y'all trying to chase this young lady, right? Now, you don't know her value. So you don't know what price it's gonna take to entertain her ideas, her dreams, her destiny. You gotta be able to pay the price. Second, third. Uh, so you gotta know your value. You gotta increase in value. And watch this. When we are mentoring, watch this. We promote your value. Those who were in my car, you were gonna do push-ups if you didn't say what? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you do still owe me ten. But 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 that's because you gotta pay the price to be increased in value, right? Right. So yes, sir, no, sir is a key. Do I have mine on me? Every day at school, I pull these out. Every day at school, I pull these out because every day at school, this is what my students want from me. They want keys. They want to rule the kingdom. I am the king of my home. I know, ladies, that sounds crazy in this 21st century, but let me help you out. Let me tell you why I'm the king. Anybody play chess in here? No. Okay, watch this. In chess, what is the most valuable piece on the board? See all that conflict? Everybody has a wrong that nobody knows. Watch this. Hold on. Listen, the importance of mentoring is to increase the value. So let me increase your value. On the chess board, the most valuable piece is the queen. Because the queen, what's that? Shh, shh, shh. Listen, listen, stop talking. The queen has all the power. But the game doesn't end until the king is done. So any king knows how to use his, or exercise his power. So when we increase your value, you first of all have to know the value of those things and those people around you. You have to second of all know, watch this, you have to increase the knowledge on how to exercise that value. And thirdly, you have to know how to promote the value. I promote my wife's value. You were, who was talking about a website? Somebody said something about a website. Uh, your name again, ma'am? Melissa. Miss Melissa said, she talked about a website. Immediately, my wife increased the value. She started her own business, left a six-figure job recently, and we're walking on water. Mm -hmm. I had to show outside the shutter, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, right? You got paper on insurance, everything, right? Mm -hmm. But her comment to me was, we have to buy a good website. So we're talking between $10,000 and $50,000 to get a good website. As a husband, I, uh, I shudder. But now, Miss Melissa just increased my wife's value. Because now I get it. The, the, the money we're going to spend for this website has value because Miss Melissa increased my value with understanding. By the way, what's the difference between knowledge? I mean, with wealth? Wealth is? Knowledge. Riches are? Dang. What do I really need? Uh, in order to get Thanks. right, she increased my knowledge. I'm a wealthier man for having met these people. You are wealthier men. You are now being mentored. Finally, let me finish up. I got two seconds. So a mentor does three things. He knows that he knows their value. He increases uh, their mentee value, and he promotes their value. And watch this. Here's the here's the thing. This is it. You ready, guys? Very important for you because you will go from mentee to mentor. soon. Everybody say soon. 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 Quit fast in a hurry. Quit fur early. You're going to be a mentor. Okay? You ready? A mentor should always teach you how to expect the best from life by doing two things. Teach you how to live with a purpose. With a purpose. That means in conjunction to your purpose. Because you're walking hand in hand with your purpose. Your purpose is there and it's, it's escorting you into your destiny. You will not get to your destiny without your in hand, you have to know your purpose. And a purposeless person misses their purpose. destiny. 
A destiny is nothing more than a destination, a target. So you cannot come to this young lady right here hollering with a hand and a hoe without at least understanding who your, what your purpose. destiny is and your, your purpose is. Because she's going to ask you this, what's your vision? That's right. Okay, but if you, wait, 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 stop, wait, stop, hold on, real quick, real quick, real quick. If you listen to me, let's stop. If you listen to me, the person that responds to her and wins her hand has an answer to that. I love risk takers. So will she. Risk takers attract. No risk, no reward. Oh, by the way, your wife, she is the reward. And a mentor teaches you how to know your value and to know the value of what you're pursuing. Okay? Whether it be a wife for life or resources that cause you to be wealthy or any of those things, you know your value. So watch this. So you live with a purpose and finally, a, a good mentor teaches you how to live daily on purpose. Because they're living on purpose. There are no accidents. Either, watch this, purposeful intention or accidental opportunity. But listen, but there are no accidents. You have to be ready for both. You have to be ready for a, a opportunity dressed in rags. Real quickly, this election, I got the one out here. This election was not about white or black, who was going to be president. This election was, did you have a plan, strategy, and a mission statement in place for whoever became president? Because you weren't going to change, only the presidency was going to change. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have a vision, a mission, and a strategy, yeah, you should have been nervous. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. And as mentors, our job is to teach you how to be prepared in every situation. So when you become a mentor, you're going to be doing what with your mentees? Teaching them how to increase their value, to know their value, and to pursue their value, and, watch this, and to live life on purpose. So ladies and gentlemen, when you're speaking to our young adults and young people out there again, and by the way, I don't use the word teenager because teenager is a negative connotation. I always say young adults because one day you will be adults. adults, and you will have to pay your own way for consequences. Exactly. We here at Mentory Manhood believe that the young men that leave our program will take our places one day. Matter of fact, we're excited about it. And so I just want to thank you, and I want to thank you for your time, and I pray that everybody understands uh, much more in, wow, I'm saying that incorrectly. I hope you understand in a better way the importance of mentoring. Thank you for your time. So now we're ready for our last speaker. Uh, definitely I'm glad she could be here because she has a wealth of knowledge uh, and, it's, it, and actually, you know, she's going to share with you a lot of the resources that can help you take it to the next level. Ms. Robbie Bell with uh, Tetco. All right. Yeah. Great. It's an honor to be here and talk to you today. Um, so we talked a lot about purpose, destiny, wealth, money. Um, let's talk about networking. All right. So networking. Somebody tell me the purpose of networking. Yes, sir. To get your research out, to expand your resources out to the world. To expand your resources out to the world. That's great. Excellent. To get your name out there. To make connections. To make connections. Great. And can you other resources to get your business in. What your purpose is right. So other purposes to get your resources out. So networking is critical if you're going to build a business. No matter what age you are, if you do not network the right way. So we've all talked about purpose. So what is your purpose? You need what we call the elevator pitch. So when somebody comes up and goes, oh, what do you do? You have to be able to say it in 30 seconds. Don't go on and on and on because then I'm going to fall asleep. So you have to be able to practice it succinctly and say what you're about. So even if you don't have a company, you be, need to be able to say that. So no matter who you're meeting, you want to be able to say who I am, what I'm about, why would I care about you? Why would I want to engage in you in a networking conversation? The other thing too is you want to network with a lot of people. You don't want to just network with your friends and people you know. You want to talk to people you don't know. Because you never know who you're going to meet. I, knew, I talked to a guy one time. He was in 
a bar. And he was sitting next to this, he overheard this conversation with these two people. And they just started talking. And the guy says, well, I'm starting my business. And I'm going to, I can't remember what the business was. And the man said, oh, really? That sounds like a great idea. I'm going to help you out. And he wrote him a check right there. So you can never know who you're going to meet. So you should respect everybody that you talk to. Never blow them off because you just never know who that's going to be that you're going to meet. Um, so knowing how to network is really key and networking with a lot of people because you never know down the road somebody you met two years ago might help you today and that's so key. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is goals. We haven't heard anything about goals. So to be successful in life, whether it's just in your own life or building your business, you need to set goals. And you need to write them down because if they just sit in your head, they just sort of spin around in your head and you can change them. But if they're written down on paper, you can look at that and go, oh yeah, I really wanted to do that. That's really important to me. And you can go after it. Who is the one that wants to own a basketball team? Who is that? Oh, he's Okay, so he can actually do that. You know, you think, oh my gosh, it takes millions of dollars. But if you start to plan now, he can get there. Because you set the goal on how to get there. So as he was talking about that, it reminds me, I'm actually working with a woman who's, who was a professional women's basketball player. She played for a team in North Carolina. And she is now retired, but she's now creating a new game for sports fans. And so I'm working with her to help her develop that game. It's going to be awesome. And so my job, I don't have the money to help her, but I connected her to the right resources. So one of these days when you go to a game, a sporting event, her game might be in that arena. So there are all kinds of possibilities for you if you plan right. So it's interesting we're talking about mentoring. Coach Ray, thank you so much for your remarks about mentoring because actually I work for an organization called TEDCO. Uh, it's called the Maryland Technology Development Corporation. And you guys live in the best state in the country for money. Well, okay, California and Massachusetts are ahead of us. But we're third in the nation. So you guys are in a good place because there is money for people starting companies. No other states besides California and, and Massachusetts measure up to Maryland and we're just a small state. So we are known nationally. So my organization was named the number one seed investor in the whole country for five years. Wow. So what does that mean? Wow. So who knows what a seed investor is? Yes ma'am, sir. So, producer, okay, that's close. Giving them money. Giving them money, okay. So what does it mean to be a seed investor? Yes, sir. Um, does it mean that you're someone who invests in, I'll say, businesses who are just starting out? Right, correct. So we're the first money in. Yes, sir. Yeah. Pretty much going to say something. Yeah, so that's it. So when you start a business, like uh, Deanna here, she actually went to her family first. And that's actually where you first get your money to go to your family and friends network first. So we call it friends, family, and fools. Because <laughs> these are the guys that are putting the big risks because they know you closest and they're willing to risk their money for you to build your business. So then we're a seed investor. So after you get a little bit of money from them to help you build your business, that's where our money comes in. And we have like lots of different funding programs to help you seed your, your um, business. But the most important part of what TEDCO does, and which is what I'm here to talk to you about, is how do we help entrepreneurs? It's not just the money. The first and foremost thing we do is mentoring. So I manage a program that works in, in the rural areas of Maryland, and we have business mentors out in the field. And so, what they do is they meet with individuals and companies and provide value. We show people that they have value. We had a guy who was working in a research lab 
And um, he's been tinkering around and he says, well, I have this product, but I don't know if it has any value. And we said, well, as an individual, we can't work with you, but you can start a company and we can help you. And in Maryland, it costs like $300 to get a business license. So it's not a lot of money. So you guys can raise your own money to start a business any time. So what we did is that we did a, a little marketing study for him and showed that his product had value. And so he actually left his job and we continued to mentor him and provide value to him to show him that his product is worth money. <coughs> He now, this is five years ago, he now has three products out in the market. He now has four employees. We continue to mentor him, and now we're actually helping him get angel investment. So mentoring is a real key aspect of that. You know, it's a lot of hand-holding. So one of the things mentors do is help relieve your fears. Because when you're starting a business, that's a big deal. Like when you're starting your gaming company. You know, you wonder, oh my gosh, am I doing the right thing? Am I building the right market? Who's going to buy it? And so mentors can help you and talk to you about, yeah, there is business there, and really help you get over those fears. And then also, we help you develop a plan. So you're not doing this alone, because you don't want to go into business by yourself. I mean, look at you. You had so much help. You had a lot of support. No business has ever succeeded that did it all by themselves. You really have to have people there to help you along the way. And with that, you have to listen. So I have a young man who was 19 years old when he started his company. He was a student at Hopkins, Johns Hopkins University. He was in a horrible car accident his freshman year. He, um, both his wrists were crushed. He had to drop out of school because he had a long time of rehab. When he went through rehab, he had um, only a hammer. There's no device to help you restore the, the muscles in your wrist. So he said, 19 years old, there's got to be a better way. So he sat down with an engineer and said, you know, I need a device and it needs to move this way and move that way and everything. And the engineer helped him to design the device. Well, luckily for him, his father was a medical doctor, so he, the, his father got him into National Rehab Hospital, and they helped him refine the device. So he came to Tedco, and he got some money for it. And so we actually helped him get a prototype built. He worked with a faculty member. But his downfall was that he didn't listen. Yeah, this is really bad. So he has this medical physical therapy device he developed that was also good for tennis playing it was also good for golf i mean it had so many applications i was at gw university and they did a marketing study for him that showed him he could make 250 million dollars a year okay listen to this he could make 250 million dollars a year a 19 year old guy building this own device on his own and he's not an engineer he's just like you guys but he didn't listen. So it's five years later and his product is still not out on the market. He's missing an opportunity. I'm missing an opportunity to make money because I invested in him. And so you have got, if more than one person tells you something, you need to listen. If people are telling you different things, then you really don't know. But when, start, when people start telling you the same thing over and over again, you really need to listen to them because they're trying to tell you something that maybe you don't want to hear, but they're probably right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like when you're reading the Bible. If you read it in more than one place, you know that, that that's, that's right. So we do a lot of hand-holding. Um, the other thing we do um, is we have portfolio managers. So when we invest in a company, what's your name, sir? D'Angelo, I love that name. So D'Angelo, when you have your company and we invest money in you, we assign somebody to work with you. We don't get in your business, but we mentor you. So I'll, I'll call you up and I'll say, hey, D'Angelo, how's your business going? And you'll tell me, oh, I'm still working on my prototype or I'm trying to get the sales. So then I will connect with you and bring people into your business that can help you. And so work with you, because I want to see you succeed. If I put money into you, I want to see you succeed, not fail. 
And so what's interesting, most people say businesses, most of them fail within five years. At Tedco, we've been around for 12 years, and only 80 only 20% of our businesses have failed. So eight in 10 businesses are still around because we mentor our companies, and we work really hard with them. So we connect you to research. We're doing a lot with angel investment. We make a lot of introductions to you. So we might introduce you to the SBDC. We might introduce you to other entrepreneurs that are doing the same thing. Um, we have a, a company that she does medical device work. And so she created a, a new device for stroke victims. And here again, it's just one individual. We're not talking about you know mega companies. One individual did this. But she's successful now. She's selling her product. She's creating um, the wealth because she was smart. She listened to people and she really built her company. So now we send people to her to get some advice. Uh, we also work in other organizations like Entrepreneur Office Hours. So there's lots of other programs out there to help educate you. We have our own educational programs. We do workshops for companies. Um, we just did one on how to build a board of directors. Because that's really key. Because when you start your business, you need people that can advise you. And you don't want all the people that say yes. You know, you want people that are going to look at your business and give you the, the hard answers. So we help people, you know, look at how you build a board, how you do hire people, because eventually you're going to need to hire people. I had one woman, and I just feel bad because she had a great marketing firm, and she was really she was really good at it. But her business was growing. She was an event planner, and she needed to start hiring people. Well, she got scared. And instead of surrounding people that could help her hire the people and really grow her business, she stopped her company and went to work. And I was just like, oh man, because she was really good at it. But good news is that she's going to start a new company. You know, sometimes you need to know what your purpose is. And that's what we've been talking about, giving back to the community. That's where your passion is. So what she started, and she's now famous, she started a thing called Diversitech to bring diversity into the technology industry. So that's really key because you don't see a lot of diversity in the tech industry. You need leaders in the tech industry that are of all races.